Hi everyone, and welcome to Project Sotes podcast. Today, I have the pleasure to finally invite the incredible Johnny Lo onto my Project Sote podcast. So Johnny is our music director at Northern Ballet, and to be honest, I'll let him talk about himself later because he's got multiple hats on. But he is working for Northern Ballet as our music director, and we work with him on many production. Basically, all the production we work with him, and so. As many of you listener right now know that my podcast is usually in Chinese, but on some occasion I will try and do some English episode to bring out new audience into Project Sote. So Johnny, why don't you、um, say hi and introduce yourself a little bit? Hi George, and、uh, good afternoon everybody wherever you're listening from. It's great to be. On here, I was going to start、um, by responding to your introduction, George, with a bit of Mandarin. I really <laughs>、okay. wanted to, but、uh, all I can say is 谢谢你 George,、uh, and、uh, 很高兴跟你说话 Ah,、oh, um, my pleasure too. <laughs> I think I said、um, thank you very much, and、uh, it's a pleasure to speak to you. And it really is. Yes.、Um, especially as my with my Asian background, coming from Hong Kong. Um, it's a particular pleasure to be able to speak to an audience from the east. Yes, yes.、Um, so you asked me to talk about myself, which is a slightly uncomfortable exercise.、<laughs> um, contrary to popular belief, conductors,、um, whatever you think of them as the images,、um, some of us do get a little bit uncomfortable with talking about myself. But、um, like you said, I am the music director of Northern Ballet. And I am also the staff conductor for the Royal Ballet at Covent Garden in London.、Mm-hmm. It's a role、um, similar to a resident conductor, really, not to do similar to what Daniel does at Northern Ballet.、Mm. And outside of ballet, I try and keep my work、um, as eclectic as possible.、Mm-hmm. Um, I do concerts、um, with orchestras, and I do. Choirs as well, and the occasional operas. Although now the ballet takes up so much time,、um, the opera is not as busy as before.、Um, and my concert work、um, happens mostly here in the West, but also、um, I conduct an orchestra in Xi'an in China. Yes, Xi'an. I think it Xi'an. is the proper pronunciation. Do I Xi'an? Yeah, that's like the first story you told me about, no? Xi'an. Oh,、uh, yeah, absolutely.、Um, my friend Dane, who is half Australian, half Malaysian, he started there first as their principal conductor, and he brought me on board as the principal guest conductor. And I was very excited to go and conduct、um, an orchestra in Asia, and I, I I love working there whenever I can. Do、so、you talk in English or Chinese? Well, the, interesting you ask that because、um, when I turned up, I, I tried really hard to speak in、um, in, in Chinese and Mandarin. Of、yeah. course, Cantonese is actually my first language,、um, which is another reason why I, I was a bit unsure to to, to, to speak to you in Mandarin, just because <laughs> I know that my Cantonese accent would just come through and and but that's it, the beauty it, it of it, isn't it? Yeah, I know, and、um, and and I would I would love the chance to have all that back up to standard, and indeed. When I was going to China a lot,、um, it was it was slowly coming, especially with listening and 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 comprehending.、Mm. Um, but the speaking itself was a bit more difficult. So hard, you know, yeah. I, yeah, and the really fine nuance in the pronunciation. I tried really hard to <laughs> use numbers. You know, yeah, sounds like five, six. That's that's sort of okay. Yeah. And then you start to use the more.、Um, Musical things like 多一点小一点长一点、ah, 多一点 you know less more less longer shorter 快一点慢一点 and all those is fine, and then you start to go into the even more、uh, musical details, and then that was when I got into trouble. We spoke about this、um, when I、uh, you know with a string instrument,、yes. um, the bows go up and they go down. Um, and so one one way going up is called the up bow, and the way going down is called down bow. So. Down bow is okay because I know how to say down. Xia xia gong. That's that's relatively gong, easy. Yes. Do it.、Um, up bow. This was difficult because in Cantonese you just say sung, which is it's and so I just 
try to change it into Mandarin, I suppose, <laughs> guess it. And so I kept saying, 你的香港, 香港, 香港, <laughs> 你的香港太长. Uh, <laughs> Too long. This went on for about, but this went on for about three months. So what does um, that actually mean in Mandarin? So it, it, Do you want to share it? it? Yeah, well, I kept saying, um, 你的香港太长, 香港太长. And then they, about three months later, um, they we, we were sat round at lunchtime and they, they said to me, did you know that you've been telling us that our husbands are too long <laughs> <laughs> rather than our uppo is too long? Because I, th- I think it's, it's more shang gong. Shang gong, uh, I, yeah. Shang gong is, is, is up. Yeah. Shang is up. Xiang gong Xiang. is another word. <laughs> Exactly, and um, and then and then from that moment onwards, actually, it, it had the effect of yes, it made me think, oh my god, I can't believe I've been embarrassing myself for the last three months, uh, but it also broke the ice a little bit, and so I was more willing to try more Mandarin. So, you know, I started to be more creative with mm-hmm. my way of speaking to the orchestra. The way I rehearse anyway, I like to use imagery. Um, so it's what do you mean by longish. imagery? So, for example. Um, I was rehearsing Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream yeah. just over the weekend, which is, of course, a Frederick Ashton ballet, as well as Northern Ballet Ballet, um, also called Midsummer Night's Dream. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the overture, um, I was trying to say to the timpanist, Ding Yingu, um, the timpani player, yeah. to not play so loud, but it's a particular way of not so loud that I was after. It's a lightness of loud. It's a lightness of articulation, like the loudness that a dragonfly would play. Oh, wow. And so that... Very it, specific, it, that's, huh? it, Yeah, but, but I think that's really important to try and... Ins- Is it because you want to create an atmosphere for Midsummer in the beginning, the overture? Absolutely, because in the overture of that piece, it's got, it's got such a specific character um, and su- such a specific scene yeah. that you are trying to set. And I think it's important when we make music with... Uh, symphony orchestra in a concert setting that we try and input our influences from the theater so we're not just playing something a little bit quieter but we're trying to evoke the image of the dragonfly Mm. or of the pixie or the little fairies that fly around so yes a fairy could be very loud and could be very strong but a very a a fairy's loudness is very different to i don't know how an army would sound yeah like heavy it wouldn't Um, be heavy so yeah Exactly. And I think that's really interesting when it comes to relating music with a theatre as well, because I see that there are some dancers who like to speak very specifically about technique, and there are some dancers who like very, speaking very specifically about imagery. I don't know, I don't know where you fall um, in, in that divide. Do you like working in technique or do you like working in metaphors? I think image, if, they, if the coach gives me an image to try to think about that, it helps me more because let's say if he wants or she wants you to be a bit longer in that movement and she will, he or she will give you an image of maybe, uh, you know, those image of like Da Vinci, you know, those mm. to make you stretch to your maximum, to make you feel like, oh, this is the image that I want you to be. Yes, I absolutely. think that really helps, yeah. Yeah, and I think it also helps us um, find our way. So, um not to be not so specific. I think part of our role, whether as conductor or ballet master or coach, is to mm-hmm. basically bring the best out of our players and our dancers. Mm-hmm. Um, to nurture the colleagues. Exactly. But it, it's but I think sometimes when we try to be too specific, we could easily fall in the trap of actually being slightly counterproductive because we like then personal attack or what? Yeah, well it's it's more that we need to leave our musicians and our dancers and the people we work with a sense of their responsibility as well so that we give them say okay what I really want to feel here is a sense of excitement or sense of vibrancy or, or, or sense of unrequited love the, the the squeeze of the heart when you really miss somebody um wow and even even music can you do that with the music well but that's just it it's I know what I'm trying to achieve yeah. with, in terms of the dramatic image and the emotion, but how to achieve it, every individual would do it differently. I suppose just in the same way that you would speak to a dancer and say, look, do you know, I, I want this to look more like you're begging or look more like that you're giving forgiveness. But that's but, acting. That's easier to act out rather than actually, music. I think, but I think that's harder 
Really? It's, and not too dissimilar to music, because in the same way that I could say to somebody, can you just play that note longer? But what sort of longer? Oh, there's what, many ways. Uh, uh, Exactly. And, and what does this longer mean? So in the same way that you, I suppose, I don't know, you tell me, you could coach somebody to, to, to look like they're forgiving somebody by dropping the eyebrows or not yeah. smile so much or angle your fingers at this particular degree. But ultimately, it's much quicker and much easier and much more inspiring and more interesting for everybody, I think, if you just mm. go in a point of drama and imagery and metaphors. Because ultimately, we are um, people who work as artists and in the theatre. We imagine a lot. Exactly. And we're trying to create a world that take people in and, and, and let them forget about the real world for a bit. And I think it's important to retain that sense of theatrical. Well, that's really interesting to hear. Because I, every time when I look at you guys, I mean, th th I have a personal question for you. Because I literally don't know how conducting works. So... Can you slowly explain to us, how do you think conductor is such an important role? Because people can just play, you know, with their, they've got papers, they got notes. But why is conductor so important in a whole production? I think the way you've asked that question is really important and really perceptive. The most important thing in what you've just said is that musicians, orchestras, however big they are, they can just play by themselves and the better the orchestra and in this country we are blessed with really good orchestras a lot of the times they can get through a symphony very comfortably by themselves yeah so then our job as conductors firstly is to i mean the very very basic and this is important in the world of ballet is to give a sense of time tempo speed so we can dictate how fast something go and whether there is a corner where we need to give a bit of pull up, slow down a little bit and then to control the tempo of things. Mm. But when it comes to controlling the tempo, actually the nuance of it is more than just controlling how fast the music goes. It's about the pacing of a piece, whether it's a small solo in a uh, ballet or the entire movement of a concerto or the entire symphony that goes on sometimes for 60 to 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we have an oversee picture of the dramatic arc of the journey from right at the very beginning of the piece to the end of the piece. Now, that's not too dissimilar, actually, to somebody who, to your sat -nav in your car, to somebody who's map reading your journey from A to B, I can dictate how quickly we go from A to B and along the way also say to you, oh, listen to this bit or really feel this emotion. Stop for a little while and experience this, whether it's joy, elation, climax, calm, any of those things. So it's a bit like I'm taking everybody on a journey um, but without saying anything at all, simply communicating all the things that I'm trying to communicate with my hands, with my face, with my physical gesture. But just like you're driving um, a car or taking people on the journey, you also have to respect the machine that you're working with. Exactly, and in my yeah. case, it is the machine of the orchestra. Even and dancer, so, even us, because absolutely, we, we yeah. need to follow the music. And if you if you just decide to go quicker, go slower, it's all we have to follow you. So you you are like the boss of mm. you're you're a boss controlling the whole show, basically, you know. But I think it's um it's a little bit more subtle than that still as well, because there are times when the conductor, like you were saying right at the beginning, have to have respect for the fact that they the conductor is 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 only one out of many in a production. And so there are times, so in the concert setting, where, um, say, a player would be would have a major solo that goes on for maybe eight bars, ten seconds even. <laughs> um, and it is our job then, I think, to just say to the orchestra, communicate to the orchestra with your hands, with your physicality, to say, look, everybody just listen. Let's give them the space to play and let their artistry shine through. Mm. And just in the same way that in ballet, there are times when actually we're not so much in charge we have to relinquish the control of the journey to what's happening on stage to the dancers so there the, so actually so an example of this happens not so much in the music itself when it's happening but when say there is a moment of pause in between numbers when there's a dramatic silence and you can just see 
every character on stage is holding on to that moment of drama, and then as the conductor, you then have to feel when to start the music again.、Mm. Too early. Oh, that's so interesting. You, yeah. Yeah. Too early, you break the silence. Too late, it's a bit eggy, as what、yeah. we call it. Um, and of course, there is the equivalent when you are actually dancing, and there are moments when,、um, you know, a, 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 a boy solo, for example, when they want to jump really high, and so you just have to give them the space to jump really high and make the music inspire them to jump really high. So at that moment, in the context of the ballet, the conductor is not in charge of the journey; the dancer is in charge of the journey. And I really wish. That dancers all around the world could be so much more confident and so much more、um, able to say to us conductors and say, "Do you know what? I know what I can influence in the music. I know what I can take charge of the music. This is what I want." Ah,、uh, so talk to you about it. Absolutely. Have a chat about what he think. Absolutely. That he want the music to be. Indeed, and to communicate because that ultimately is what the joy of、um, working in a theatre and working a team is about. Is having that、um, collaboration kind of feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's、uh, that's jump back to the beginning that you said because you're working for Northern Ballet as a music director. And also, you're working at the Royal Opera House, which is massive. I I know you guest conducting at multiple places too, and I just kind of want to ask you, how do you do this? Like, because I remember last year, and、mm. I think around World Ballet Day, we literally saw you conducting for our shows, and then the next day you were in World Ballet Day doing live. Live conducting at the Royal Opera House, and then the next following day, you are somehow back in Leeds, <laughs> helping out with the rehearsal. And I'm just like, whoa! I just saw you on the screen there and there. Like, I don't know how you. I think I guess my question is, how do you prepare and how do you keep yourself so calm to just do this one thing at a time? The most important thing about、um, being a traveling conductor. Is to be really, really on top of the train and plane schedules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that、exactly. so then you have a really good idea of what your travel plans are, and most importantly, your backup travel plans. And I think it's really interesting to to consider whether、um, we're going to be going back to that old world of jet setting and shooting up and down within the same country is okay. But so just at Christmas、um, 2019, going into 2020, around the time of Northern Ballet's 50th anniversary gala,、mm. um, I was actually commuting between Birmingham and Amsterdam with Dutch National Ballet、no. at the at at that time because I was doing Nutcracker with Birmingham Royal Ballet at the same time as I was doing Nutcracker with、um, with 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 Het. Yes. Um, and at the same time, having I remember sitting in Amsterdam after a matinee show between the matinee and the evening with all the scores of the Northern Ballet Gala、mm. in front of me. And there's a me, lot. The there's a lot. We did a lot. There was a huge amount. Yeah, and all of it I didn't know.、Um, the thing about gala programs is that actually everybody should be quite familiar with the repertoire, but all of that was new to me. Anyway,、um, but what was really interesting about that experience?、Um, I mean, you bring up、um, World Ballet Day and also moving into the gala and all that, but actually, that's relatively okay because the repertoire was so different between World Ballet Day and Northern Ballet. I was、uh, back last autumn in November, October time. I was working on a gala program in London, but up north it was Dangerous Liaison. So the music and the styles of choreography are very different. Yes, and it was relatively easy for me to isolate because you know doing. Chai Pa and Balanchine. It's a different way to approach the music and approach and approach the conducting compared to doing Dangerous Liaisons and compared to doing a classical ballet. But I think it was really interesting doing two Nutcrackers at the same time. It's a different.、Um, it's a very different. Very, they were very. They are very different. Yeah. So the、um, Birmingham Royal Ballet Nutcracker is by Sir Peter Wright. The Het Nutcracker is. By Wayne,、uh, what's his name? The guy, yeah, by Wayne Eagling,、um, and which is a very similar production to the one that EMB does,、um, and they are very different.、Um, the, the the structure of it is much the same, but the steps are very different.、Um, 
the Dutch version is more complicated. There are more steps in it than the uh, Birmingham version. But actually, the fact that they are sort of similar makes it even harder. Because you look up and, and you think, oh, there are certain things which look similar, but actually they're quite different. Mm. And the dances are very different. Um, the Birmingham dancers, compared to the Dutch dancers, their training, the companies are very different. So the most important thing, I would say, is to spend enough time in the studio with both companies to make sure that you don't only just understand the choreography, but you also understand the, the dancers, dancers, get to know them, mm. understand the, the, the ballet masters, the ballet mistresses, the directors, um, and the feel and the energy of the company. So you can best tailor how you approach your music making according to the company. Well, it's a it's a massive job, no, because it's it, cross country kind of career. It's not just uh, England. So my question was with the Royal Opera House, and it was just within England. But now you spoke about uh, the Dutch National Ballet as well. I'm 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 overwhelmed. I'm <laughs> just listen to this. <laughs> um, yeah, it's um, but I really enjoy it. I like the challenge of meeting different companies, and I really enjoy the challenge of working with different orchestras, of course, but also different pianists and different dancers, um, because I find their uh, personalities very interesting. Mm. And I think one of the main reasons I'm drawn to this job as a conductor, not just conductor for ballet, as a conductor in general, is my fascination with people and with humanity. And so um, when you go and work with dancers and with musicians who are absolutely at the top of their game and try and understand their personalities and 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 find a way to connect and to gain their trust which is a lot of what working in a ballet company and in music and with an orchestra is about is to gain their trust Mm. um i i find that really interesting and it makes the job different i wouldn't actually see it as a challenge i would see it as a positive side of my career that I get to keep my work fresh and different every time you know yeah as I say it's a massive job to to prep to get to know the people and to make sure that you are delivering the your top your your best yeah absolutely and of course um that comes with more than just preparation as well um it's it's to do with making sure that you've got enough um time to to rest in between um and i think um as <laughs> some of my nearest and dearest will tell you that i'm really bad at um, having enough time to stop in between yeah but i think it's it's also important to keep going isn't it i mean you must feel the same when th- the moment you stop actually that's the moment when you find hardest to get going again no? yeah i i feel you um yeah exactly and you've got to you're gonna get back into fitness i think i think conducting and Thinking about music, the brain is, is a muscle, isn't it? You just have to keep exercising it. Um, at the time of the season, when I dread, dread is maybe not the right word, the word when I <laughs> worry yeah. the most yeah. is, is perhaps in the summer. It's about now when I, you know, the music making stopped for a couple of weeks. But you're still prepping doing... for the next season, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. But um, there is something really specific about that muscle, that connection between your ear and your brain that needs to be exercised. I guess it's it, it must be the same for, for you dancers when you have to have a specific muscle that is reserved for ballet. Well, my um, feet, you for know, sure. It, yeah, I need to warm exactly. up my feet. Otherwise, yeah. it'll be so stiff after when, when I come back for three, three weeks. Exactly. So even though you're using your feet every day, you're walking every day, it's you're not the same, every huh? day, but... Exactly. So even though I'm looking at music, I'm prepping music, I'm, I'm prepping shows every day, but that sensitivity between sound and brain is very, um, it's a muscle that needs warming. Mm. Just exactly also is that awareness, the mental state that we have as conductors, especially for ballet, and the very small differences between too fast, just right, and too slow. That, it's that a fine it, line. It's, it's, it's such a fine line, isn't it? And I find it really interesting that talking to dancers, um, all of you get so nervous about talking to conductors about tempo because you'll say... Because we don't want to annoy I, you, I, that's why. Because oh, but that's our job. I saw you coming up to the stage every single show to ask, 
how how was the show last time? What would you like to change this time? You know, it's it's a very different way of communication. I think it's I think it's quite healthy like that. I really hope that I'm not the only one, and I know that I'm not the only one. I really hope that all my colleagues and I hope that dancers would feel、um, comfortable talking to us as well, because ultimately, what we want to do is to put on the show that everybody's happy with.、Mm. But I also I find it really interesting that. Yeah, you dancers. When you do come and speak to us about tempo, sometimes you just you you make sure that you say it's only a little bit. It's it's it's, it's just just a little bit. <laughs>、uh, it's it's almost <laughs> to、uh, make you feel better. <laughs> I I sometimes feel like it's almost like you're yeah, too worried、probably. to say if you say oh yeah it's too fast would go too far. Yeah, because the margin is so fine between just right and too fast and too slow, and sometimes I I feel like. And and this is this is another interesting part about working in different places and working with different casts. Even、yeah. is that there are different ways of approaching musicality and different repertoire demands different approaches to musicality. I think, whereas you know,、uh, with with Balanchine, for example, is supposed to be、um, fussy on point. It's supposed to be Broadway, but with point shoes. Yeah.、Um, and so very music, exciting. Yeah, exactly. So the music has a role to 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 to. To create the fire, to simmer,、mm. and to energize, and to create the electricity. So, if if we sit in the pit and wait and look for things to happen before we make things happen, then we're always going to be a little bit behind, and、mm. things are always going to get a bit too slow.、Um, the analogy I use、um, is that the music needs to be like the wind behind the sail of a sailboat. Oh wow! So that, that is, we that is give、deep. you. So we could, yeah, but but it it it. I think it makes sense to me when I feel it and when I think about it.、Mm. So the wind gives just enough energy for the boat to travel at a speed that the boat wants to travel at. The boat is comfortable at, depending on the conditions, and depending on the course.、Um, but it's but you need a certain amount of energy in the wind to keep the boat moving. But if you go too far, you topple the boat. But if the wind is too slow, then the boat doesn't go. So it's finding that sweet spot of just enough energy to for push the sail for the boat. Yeah, exactly.、Um, and so I find、oh, that's that, a really beautiful way to say it. But I, I, but I think what's interesting also is that one needs to be aware that different dancers are different boats, and everybody likes every sail is different. You know, everybody needs something different. Yeah, and you cannot possibly understand what everybody needs without studio time and without getting to know the dancers. And I think. This is where yes, sometimes it looks like we're traveling. You know, we do a show here on a Monday, and we do a different show here on a Tuesday, and a different show here on a Wednesday. But actually,、um, it's the studio time when I feel that I need to be in one place the most. I see. So I always try, especially if it's a new production to me, try and carve out say two weeks of time when I'm just with company, one company, and nowhere else,、mm. so that I could really get to know the people. You set know? the minds on the company. And yeah, know the people as you say. Yeah, absolutely. But also、um, in the studio, you know, sometimes I, I find that dancers and ballet master, ballet staff, sit there and see a conductor come in and go, "Oh, I'm really sorry. This this rehearsal is going to be really, really boring for you because we're not running anything."、Mm. But actually, I find those rehearsals sometimes just as useful. As the rehearsals when you're running stuff, because the the rehearsals when the dancer is fixing things, working on things, that's when it's most interesting for us to sit and observe、mm. their personality. So we get a sense of okay, does this person like to be pushed, or do they like to have space? Do they are they really are they someone who dances on the music, as in they want every step. Every PK to line up with every note, or are they someone who go? I want the music to do pretty much the same every night, and so I can dance with a sense of rubato,、mm. um, dance with a sense of、um, playfulness, so they can play with the music. And I find that is an that especially that sense of rubato in、um, in in dancing is something that I I, I wish people would talk about more. Yeah,、um, and because it is a concept that is common between music and dance, and it is something that we can find common ground a lot. So, you know, if there's a time when you feel like you've really hit that arabesque and you're going to sit on that for <laughs> another、yeah. two beats,、um, that's absolutely fine. Will、But、you、so、wait for it? You... Well, that's just the thing. That's it. It depends. 
is it do, would the dancer would the ballet staff or would the production would the choreography want us to hold and be a bit slower so you can sit on it and I can wait or actually if the music keeps going and the music has an energy on it then actually what is even more exciting is that yes great you are really on your leg on that arabesque so you sit on it but then you dance the next four steps really fast so you then catch up yeah. so there, there, there's there's a dynamic there's a texture to the dancing just in the same way that we try our best to find dynamic and texture in our music making but every dance is different every production is different even every solo within the same production could be different so this is where spending time to get to know people um, is the important and the interesting part of the job. Well, while talking to you, I can just feel all your passion about conducting or your your passion for this arts. And thank you so much for sharing the insight with us. It's been such a pleasure, George. And um, I look forward to following this wonderful project. I, I love seeing all the pictures and all the amazing initiatives. Thank you. And I really love the fact that you... Um, bring so much of what's happening out especially in europe and translate it into chinese and share it to the asian audience i i i love it when i first started that was my idea of like sharing the stuff from western world to like asia mm. because people not necessarily know english so maybe they don't receive the first hand news mm. so this is where this platform is born i think it's wonderful and i think um especially in this stage of globalization and diversity and it's really interesting to see um, the sharing of cultures between the east and the west and you know i think there is so much that the east could offer to western mm. classical ballet i was just looking at the um, brochure for um the hong kong season upcoming up and oh they were amazing yeah their marketing is crazy Indeed, and I and I really like the idea of using dim sum yeah. um, as as part of the Nutcracker, um, uh, you know, or the diverts in yeah. it, and so using that Asian flavor, I think it's wonderful, um, and I really hope that I'll be able to see it when when it comes out. I know, me too. I I think they're doing such an amazing job in collaborating mm. their culture to ballet. Yeah, mm, indeed. But thank you so much for joining me with this podcast. And I will see、Great. you next time. A pleasure, George. Thank you very much. <laughs>